abusia for Dr. Ebel Damina. Eh, wakoye interview sa hudu mibre, ewa po adumoche fidi yinu so. Na utie interview sa hudu wa, eye Dr. Ebel Damina, akwa akoye, ewa po fidi yinu so wa, edoso. Inti weni ebe konu in series, because in semo awo kano, ewa siye pekeno by series, nye timi ehe, yu ubi aduna jwen chire eba. Na me premier eye this video so nini na, na ofe nini na na ese live for the amount, na onso wo chire wa adwene fahon. Dr. Demina asemwa midi din kanyi edia mamo se enye nyankupon ene komande eye ijana Elijah ene shishi ba akonfono. O se it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah according to Dr. Ebel Demina. Yani video we atre ni yi pa anko fumi brina e busa kwa kwa sinse ah. Nenye nyankupon eye e ansan de the prayer of eye Elijah. Nenye nyami bene ansan the prayer of Elijah. We your questions are hold Dr. Demina, a copy mu, a wo a yapo, I don't watch a video so, or co ansign a edema po. A young co, young co tea, a yet full video, no, a answers or deba, no, so far, once as you comment section, a very important. Na yum she said your walk canon, no crib boom, and I say and so on so, who's a bit me actually a wagon, and I was a quiet or so. Young co full video number six here. Okay, thank you. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Damina. Let's watch this video of you. Uh, can you play the video now? Let's 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 watch it. Doctor Damina said it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. The two fires in Elijah story are not the same. The fire of Mount Carmel is from God because that fire was a miracle. That is different from this one. This one came to consume human beings. That fire that consumed people was Elijah opened the door to spirits. Now it is left for you to choose whether you believe Jesus or Elijah. The problem is many Nigerians who are Christians do not have faith in Jesus. If I go to church where people are not taught to love, all the emphasis is fall and die, judgment, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted. Touch me by mistake, die by correction. If I be a man of God, Dr. Damina said it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. I repeat, it was not. The problem is many Nigerians who are Christians do not have faith in Jesus. They do not believe that Jesus is God. They see Jesus as the same with Elijah and Moses. So Elijah, if he says something, Jesus cannot correct it because they are age mates. Many Nigerians do not understand that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of Elijah. The absence of God's presence is destruction. Just like if you remove light, what happens? Darkness. If you remove life, what happens? Death. So God does not kill. Death is the absence of God. God does not destroy. Destruction is the absence of God. As long as God is there, there can be no destruction. Nobody can destroy in the presence of God. There is only one thing in the presence of God. It's fullness of joy. <laughs> That's controversial. Elijah prayed as we are told and the children died. You said Elijah prayed to evil spirits? Second Kings chapter 1. The Bible tells us, Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come and fire destroy 250 people. Mm -hmm. In the book of Luke chapter 9, Jesus was to go through Samaria mm -hmm. and the Samarians refused him coming through their city. And his disciples said to Jesus, shall we command fire to come down and destroy these people as Elijah did? And Jesus turned and rebuked them mm -hmm. and told them, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another city. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he refused them bringing the fire of Elijah down in the book of Luke, if he was standing by where Elijah spoke, he would have rebuked Elijah. Yeah, but Jesus is a mediator. He is the savior. He cannot do what Elijah did. It doesn't mean Elijah's uh, command did not come from God. No, he didn't. God never sends fire to destroy people. Yeah, but God punished Adam. The punishment of Adam mm -hmm. was spiritual separation. God punished Cain. Spiritual separation. What's that? Remember, spiritual separation means not extinction. They rejected the gospel. They said no to God. God can't force himself to them. So he gave them up to what they wanted. 
He gave them up to what they wanted. So who killed the Adam children for Elijah? Because that. Elijah didn't kill them himself. That's why Jesus said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. That means there are spirits. Bible says, neither give room to the devil. When with your pronouncements, people believe in you, and you open the door for Satan, he comes in to destroy them. Evil As spirits it, can obey the word of Elijah? Oh, sure. Why not? That's why you don't give room to the devil. You give room to the devil with words. That's why the Bible says, say not in your heart. There are things you don't say. The righteousness of faith speaketh on this wise. So as a man of God, the members in your congregation are under your spiritual authority. You are the doorkeeper to that congregation. You can open the door for evil spirits to come in and carry out havoc. And if you do that, you are not fulfilling the ministry of Jesus Christ. Remember, did God punish Elijah for that? No, he didn't. We he didn't. rewarded him, actually. Elijah didn't see death. Reward how? Elijah died. Oh, it's, it's Elisha that didn't see death. All of them died. Enoch didn't see death. Enoch died. But we are told that a chariot took him to heaven. In the Old Testament, uh -huh. it was a type of death. It was a type of death because Hebrews chapter 11. Elijah died? Yes. Hebrews chapter 11. What did he say? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, Now faith is a substance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain good report. Mm -hmm. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, mm -hmm. that the things that do appear were made of things that do not appear. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Mm -hmm. That's verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 13, he now said, This all died. I don't understand. Enoch did not see death. Enoch died. This all of them died, not having received the promise, but they looked forward to the promise. So what was so, the type of death that Enoch died? Is it like the death that people die today? It was just a type of death. That, well, how does that, it manifest? People well, die Bible today says, by life, becoming a lifeless the body. The Bible says he was not. He was not. God took him. But yes. Hebrews tells us he died. Elijah. So when they say God took him, how should we understand it? Well, that's death. His spirit went to God. His body went to the earth. But it says by faith he did not see death. By faith he did not see death. That's what the Old Testament says. But Hebrews interpreting, remember the New Testament interprets the Old Testament. In the interpretation of it, Revelation tells us that this all died. That is why they were waiting for Jesus to rise from the dead. Nobody went to heaven till Jesus came and died and rose. John chapter 3 verse 13. He says, no man has ascended up to heaven, but the son of man which came down from heaven. So nobody went to heaven before Jesus rose from the dead. All of them died. And they were buried and kept in paradise in the underworld, awaiting the resurrection of Jesus, which opens man's access into heaven. Hmm. That's very complicated, I'm sure. No, it's, very, it's very simple. So this video we showed of you right now. Yes. Uh, you said people shouldn't pray for people to die. Yes. That's not love. The gospel is the love of God. God loved But why doesn't God punish the people who do that? Like Elijah. Because there's a day of punishment coming. That day has not yet come. Today is the day but of But Elijah salvation. will go to heaven. Elijah will go to heaven because uh, Elijah in the Old Testament, in spite of all he did, still believed in the resurrection of Jesus. The, the foretold resurrection of Jesus. They believed it in a promise. Like Abraham. That he will come, he will die, and he will resurrect. That faith so that, in that that's promise salvation was them. salvation to them. The Bible says they died in faith. Today people die in Christ. There are two different things. They died in faith. Today people die in Christ. Those who died in faith rose together with Jesus on the resurrection day. But those who died in Christ are still in the grave, awaiting the resurrection of the body. Where mortality shall put on immortality. Where is the soul of the person who is died and who is in Christ? The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So if a believer dies today, he is present with the Lord where he has always been. It's just that this compartment is no more there. It's in the grave. So they are present with the Lord. They are present with the Lord. I believe a person who dies not in Christ, where is his soul? A person who dies not in Christ is in outer darkness. What's that? In outer darkness, hell. Not but they fire. said hell hasn't started yet. Not fire. Not fire hell. Not fire hell. But, but hell, a place of outer darkness where those without Christ are assembled awaiting judgment. And the place is dark. Physically dark or we don't know. Well, you just call it outer darkness. No light there. God is not there. God is light. The parable told in the Bible about the rich man who was looking for uh, Lazarus to uh, get his people and Lazarus to drip him water 
Is it a parable that we should understand as a metaphor or as an actual story? No, it's a parable that we should understand that it has facts, it has fictions, but there's a lesson to learn. The lesson simply is that before Jesus rose from the dead, both the righteous people and the unrighteous were close by, mm -hmm. but not in the same place. Mm -hmm. That's why the rich man could call Lazarus, and Lazarus and Abraham could answer the rich man. They were in the same area. But upon the resurrection of Jesus, he evacuated the saints that were there, and they all went up with him. Up? Yes, they went, they, they went Somewhere in, else. into glory. Yes, they went into him, with him into glory. So now, if you are where Lazar, uh, the rich man was, you can't see Abraham. If you are where the rich man was, yes, because there was a goal fixed between them. So now you can't see Abraham? No, you can't. Hmm. Okay. Let's look at another video uh, now. <laughs> uh, please play the video. Question would be this: What was the tithe used for? Yes. Number one, it was used to support the house of God. Correct. Number two, it was used to support the Levites. Yes. Number three, it was used to support the, the strangers, the yes. orphans, yes, and the widows. Still the same. So in the New Testament, yes. why do we give? We give to support the work of God. Absolutely. Why do we give? We give to support the man of God. Yes. Why do we give? We give to support the poor, the widows, and the orphans in the church. Correct. But in the New Testament, there's no legalism attached to it. Moreover. If people under the blood of bulls and goats were given 10%, how much more a man under the blood of Christ? To give more. So generosity. That's what the first fruit Much comes more from. giving. No, the first fruit is not. So you are not against Titan after all, Abel Damina? No, I'm not. I don't. You see, let people not. Just, but if you Google Abel Damina now, they say away. you're against Titan. Let them not run away with social media hypes and bloggers who are looking for, for views and followings. Oh, I when see. When people listen to me, they need to go to my YouTube channel and get the complete message. I see. If people can just patiently follow what I teach, most of the impressions people have about me, they will throw it away. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Because any, any Google search of a builder, man, I will tell you that here's a man who's against Titan. Because, so I was surprised. Because bloggers who are looking for, for following and views so are you have So do you have, a, do you have a, a period in your church where they say, it's Titan time, bring your... No, we don't have Titan in our church. We ask people to give generously. So how many and offerings do you take during the service? We give, like, we give like two offerings. During the service? Yes. During Which is the church. same for many churches? Yeah. Two offerings. One offering is the offering we give in honor of the word of God to enable us to do more for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then the second offering are the offerings we give for bills to be paid, TV, broadcast, radio, and all of that. Have you amended your tithe message? No, I've never. I can never. That's the truth. So you take tithe? I don't take tithe. I thought in light of what I'm teaching there on the video. So you take offering? We take offerings, generosity. You don't call it tithe? No, it's not about the calling. It's about the legalism in it. Mm -hmm. The tithe has a legalism attached to it that if you don't, God will not rebuke the devourer. If you don't, Satan will come after you. If you don't, that's the legalism in it. That in the New Testament, we don't have that legalism. Generosity is what we have. We give to God generously. We give to God willingly. We give to God in response to our understanding of his love for us and the work he has left for us to do on the earth. If you don't give to the church, but you give to people on the street, give to orphanage like Bill Gates does, Elon Musk, they pay to, is that also a blessing? Well, that's, that's secular. It, it's not Bible. So that's not blessing? That's not Bible. I can't say it's not blessing. But it's not Bible. Ron can only made a song and said, when you give, give to the Lord. Yes. Give to the Lord only. That means give to church or well, give, give to a pastor. Well, when you give to the church, remember the church has an organized system by which the money will be utilized. Both for the work, to give to the welfare of the poor, like it was in the book of Acts. The givings were to the church. Then the church set up a welfare system where things were properly distributed. In chapter 6, the same thing. People were appointed because there must be an organized leadership in how these monies are administered effectively to serve the purpose of God on earth. I've had Nigerian businessmen who say that 30% of my tithe goes to Oedipo, 20% goes here, 20% to personally to the man of God. Is it wrong? Well, again, it's their money. They have a right to do whatever they want. Will they to be blessed? Well, you are not blessed because you gave. You are blessed because you are blessed. God blessed you before you gave. Whether you give or not, you'll be blessed. Whether you give or not, you're already blessed. It has nothing to do with your prosperity. It has nothing to do with it. But as a responsible child of God who is growing in the knowledge of Christ, you give, of course, to support God's work. Do we have ancestral curses? And some pastors teach on what they call altars and foundations. Do we have ancestral curses that require a lot more prayer to take it out of well, a man's life? Once a man comes into Christ, he doesn't have none of those. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. Now therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. The man in Christ doesn't have a foundation. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, Christ Jesus. So the believer in Christ is already on the right foundation. You don't have to break any foundation for him. The people that could have curses and have foundational problems are people without Christ. But for the believer in Christ, what Christ has done is more than enough. The only thing the believer will now need is knowledge. The knowledge of what has been done so he can walk in the reality of what Christ has done. The believer is in victory. The believer has defeated Satan. The believer has authority over Satan and his cohorts. And all the believer needs to know is to understand the authority. that has been. That's why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know number one the hope of his calling. Number two the riches of his inheritance. Then number three that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe. According to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Remember Jesus said behold I give you power to trample over Sabbath and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you so the believer in christ just needs to understand what christ has done the authority available to him and function in that reality so you don't have to go for teachings of altars and foundations no you to don't see if your if your father was a fetish priest should you be worried that the cases are to the third and fourth generation is darkness and light mm -hmm. darkness and light light is not doesn't need to worry about darkness the appearance of light is the disappearance of darkness. The believer is in light. The Bible says you have become, who have delivered us, delivered, passed from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. So the believer has moved from one kingdom to another. It's like I'm in Ghana now. I was in Nigeria yesterday before you flew me in here. When I was in Nigeria, I was under the jurisdiction of the Nigerian laws. But now I'm in Ghana. I'm under Ghana laws. I'm not going to violate Ghana laws because in Nigeria, that's not a law. So when you move from darkness to light, you came under a new government. In the light, in the kingdom of God, darkness cannot operate there. So a man cannot be born of God and be worrying about darkness and Satan. He's a master over Satan, over demons, and over all the forces of darkness and whatever Satan can, can offer. And if Satan misbehaves, the Bible says you resist him. He flees. The believer is in victory and authority. So teaching a believer to go and begin to examine foundations, to go and begin to study ancestral causes, is taking a man from light to darkness. Is messing up the man's identity. Is reducing the person to a place from where Christ exalted him from. Is subtracting, taking value away from that person. Instead of worrying about darkness, you just try to discover the light that you have become and walk in that light and subdue darkness. Because the light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot handle it. Jesus Christ told his apostles one day that the kinds of things they were encountering with the demon, it required fasting and prayer. That's Matthew chapter 21. What does it mean? What, what Jesus was simply saying is they couldn't heal somebody and they brought them to Jesus. And Jesus said, it was because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. Your unbelief. Mm -hmm. How be it this kind of your unbelief? This kind of your unbelief cannot go out except by prayer. The fasting they cannot are, go out of them. The, the, the disciples. Uh, that the unbelief the way to cannot overcome go out their of the disciples except by fasting and by prayer. prayer. So the fasting and prayer referred to is not the healing of the sickness. No, no, no. It's the unbelief. It is about themselves. Yes. That they needed fasting and prayer to, to get the faith. To get, yeah, to get over the unbelief that hindered them from operating in faith. Fasting and prayer. Yes. I thought faith was simple. I thought well, you were born again. That was simple. before Jesus died. Okay. Again, remember, Jesus was under the law. Mm -hmm. So he just operated with what was available as at that time. But upon his resurrection, the moment you receive Christ, all of faith comes on your inside. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. When Christ enters you, all of God's faith comes on your inside. When we think of Easter, should we cry or should we rejoice? We should rejoice. He's no more in the grave. He's alive. He has defeated sin. He has defeated hell. He has defeated the grave. He has defeated eternal damnation. And the moment you receive that work of his cross, you pass from death to life. It calls for rejoicing. And even if you cry, it should be tears of joy. So we shouldn't watch Mel Gibson's video, The Passion of the Christ. He goes to the, the uh, cinema hall they are watching and everyone is crying. Well, I mean, they are crying about the suffering of Jesus. Well, again, And that film does not include the resurrection anyway. Yeah, so it, it, the message is lost. 
Mm. It's Hollywood for money. Okay, Dr. Damina, there's this scripture that is confusing a few people. Revelation 3, 9. Those who say they are Jews and they are not, but they are part of the synagogue of Satan, I will bring them to worship before you. Some have interpreted this scripture to mean that it is reference to present-day Jews, most of whom are Americans and British, who trace their origin to Judaism in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, as you know, was created by American British in the Second World War. Yep. And some pastors or some people want us to understand this scripture to mean the current crop of people who call themselves Jews are really not Jews at all. How do but, you see that scripture? Well, again, you know, the book of Revelation is a bit complex in the fact that it requires a lot of interpretation. And the reason is simply because it was a book written out of a vision that was given to John. And once you're dealing with visions, you need to be a bit careful. But the core message of that book is chapter 2 and chapter 3, the later to the seven churches. Mm -hmm. The emphasis of that, that later to the seven churches was doctrine. Mm -hmm. Doctrine, what they were teaching that was not in line with the finished work of Christ. Mm -hmm. What they were teaching that exalted works what they were teaching that brought, you know, in fact, one of the churches says because you excavate the depths of Satan. Churches that talk about the fingers of Satan, you know, uh, the mysteries of Satan, exposing Satan, and all the emphasis is Satan, Satan, Satan. And he wrote a letter to that church and warned them to stay away from such teachings because those teachings are contrary to the finished work of Christ. You know, when you deal with Jews in the Bible, the Bible way of dealing with Jewish people has to do with the, the, the Old Testament Jews where there was a dichotomy between the Gentiles and the Jews, which in Christ Jesus now, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. All has been amalgamated, and out of them, a new kind of humanity has been brought forth. So again, all those letters were rebukes because of doctrines that were taught in those seven churches that contradicted what Christ has done in his finished work. That's why in chapter 1, he begins the book by establishing that it is Christ who died, who has saved us, who has washed us with his blood, and he has made us kings and priests unto our God. Then he began to say to him that overcome it. And then he began to deal with the fact that the overcomer will have rewards with Jesus. Then he now wrote to the angel of the churches who are doctrinal instructors and began to rebuke them for false teachings that contradicted what Christ has done in his burial and resurrection. That's what the book of Revelation generally is about. So even that context we're looking at now is a rebuke on doctrinal teachings doctrinal teachings that contradicted the finished work of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. On, on a final note, should a government build a cathedral for the nation for the worship of God? Well, it depends. Um, it could be wrong, it could be right, depending you know, um, what the government aims to achieve. You know, the government uh, aims to achieve a, a place of worship. Yeah, I mean, if there's no place that can take believers you know, when believers are having big occasions, big conferences, and the government decides to provide a facility that, you know, national meetings can hold, believers' conferences, global meetings can hold in those venues, and they make revenue out of it for government, there's nothing wrong with it. And the government says that the inauguration of the presidents going forward will be done there? Nothing wrong with it, just like America. If people are opposed to it and say that we don't have water, we don't have food, well, then again, you are going to build a cathedral. Again, like I said, it depends on the government. So the government will know its priorities. They must know, what am I here for? I'm here to take care of my people. So is cathedral superior to the needs of the people? We need roads. We need health care facilities. We need educational facilities. If that is not yet provided, national cathedral is not what you need. We, will ne we might never finish providing that because America hasn't finished. No, what, and they what, say, seek ye first the kingdom what, and everything what shall I mean be added. What I mean by provide is at least there should be basic. It should basically be provided. We may not have it in its robust form, but there should be a skeletal provision all over. Oh, that, that one people, every African country has. Oh, so, but uh, they say that seek ye first the kingdom. No, the kingdom is not physical building. God does not dwell in physical temples. So if they are building it for God, it's not God doesn't live there. God will never live there. God has never lived there. God lives in people. And that is why it is much more a, a service of God to take care of the people in whom he lives than to just build a monument that nobody uses all the time. No, they would use it. They would have the National Cathedral. They can call for National Prayer. They can call for but something. But it's not weekly. No, it's not weekly. Exactly. But it has other purposes. The cathedral that was designed by the government, they say has other purposes. It has tourism potentials. It has everything. And there's a whole place dedicated. So like a, like and a, prime like, land was taken for this. Like I said, it depends on the priority of that government. Because each government has campaign promises. 
it has its policies and priorities. It depends on what that government has. Should Christians support a national cathedral? Well, whether they support or not, it will be done if government decides to do it. Whilst the government is doing it, should Christians support it? Well, go Christians are supposed to pray for government and wish government well. Christians are supposed to pray for government and wish them well and wish the government well. That's what. The so, Bible if you're a Christian, says. a government is doing something. You have to support it. Well, because you are supposed to pray for government. Well, you just pray for them. You don't if I don't push. support the party that has won the election in government, why should I pray for you them? You necessarily don't have to support them, but you pray for them. I, I don't support them. I'm an, I'm, I support the other party that didn't win the election. No, once they have won, they are, the, they are the government of your day. They determine the policies and everything. So you pray for them so that, you know, God will but help But I them. want them to lose the election so my people will win. Why should I pray well, for them? Well, why should the whole society suffer for all the years that it takes in the constitution before there is another election? Oh, so you pray for them to succeed. But if they succeed, they will win the next election. Well, if they succeed and they win and they're doing well for the people, let them do at least. There's a, t there's a period to which where their tenure will end completely and a new government will have to come But if they power. do well, when their tenure ends, they will win again. Well, again, the Bible just says pray for those in authority. But I, I'm not a... part of them. I don't it want them to. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a part of them to wish them well. I don't want them to they win. They are the government of the day. At least they should be. So able I'm to keep Peter Obi supporter. I should pray for Bolatin. Oh, you should. No, no, I want him to fail in four years. Then we can win. Well, you shouldn't. That's not the will of God. The will of God is for you to pray for the government. Yeah, but, but, the will but of I God, support Peter Obi. He prays. He's a good Christian. Bolatin is not a good Christian. Once the man, he won the election. Once the man has been sworn into power, he becomes your commander in chief. The best you do is to pray for him. Even if you're not going to support church him. Will your church pray for Bolatin? We're praying for him every day. If he comes to your church to speak to the church, would you permit it? As the father of the land, yes, I'll give him a microphone to greet the church. Election time is running for a second time. He comes, shows I'm up. not going to give him a microphone. But he's still the father of the land, even if no, he's no, running no, for no, election. No, 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 because at that time, we know that there's a transition in already beginning. And I know the calendar. I know how it functions. So I know what is coming. So now you allow him? I'll allow him because, I mean... He's the father of the land. Yes. If the senator in your area wants to come and speak to the church, it's okay. What is he going to speak? I've got to know what he wants to say. But he's the father of the, of the, as a senator, he's the father of the... Of the Still, area. I've got to know what he wants to say. But with the president, you don't want to know what he's going to say. You well, put him because again, the, the, the president will not just travel all the way to come and speak to my church. He will tell me there's a reason why I want to speak to them. He will share with me. Mm. Yeah. Super Eagles have qualified for the World Cup just before they go to the World Cup. They want to come to your church. For what? Prayer. Well, I wish them well. No, they want to be in the church for prayer. If you they... put them on the stage, line them up, and then... And then you say the super eagles are here. Let's stand up and pray for them. This World Cup, Nigeria has to go far to the glory of God. No, I'm just going to wish them well. I'm going to tell them, yeah, you can come to our church and worship. We don't keep you out so you hear the word of God. And at the end, we'll say, hey, guys, you have trained. Train some more as you go and just trust God. Do your best. Nothing, nothing more. Mm -mm. You won't pray that they should win the My cup. My prayer is not going to make them win or lose. It is the, the, their practice, their skills. They are exercising. Oh, but there's a lot of lack in football. A, a ball that hits the post today could have gone into the net tomorrow. Well, so there's a bit of providence uh, in football. And well, so prayer can work. That prayer will have worked where they were doing exercise, where they were doing their training, where they were developing themselves to go and engage in that competition. In summer, Dr. Demina Editu Gedi, Abra Oko Po Adomotri Efidiusu. Eh, ye besan the episode for forever. Na semu a walking. Bi busa wa woke me yenu. Uhu ni said the walk can ukribu. And I say a yon tro. Answer say a pardon. A true. And I say a false. For our comment, a good comment section. Bi di de wanaba. Yedasi.